Hey guys, welcome in. I'm Jay. This is SmartHelping.com, and I've got a giant improvement to the inventory forecasting template. This is the top selling template at SmartHelping.com, so it's been a couple years since I really went through and tried to optimize it. It is amazing now. There's I've got it down to a single version, which will work for startups. It will work for ongoing operations, and it is much easier to scale this. If you want to go more than 19 SKUs, it can go to thousands if you want, and it's not that heavy of a workbook anymore. I changed it from being a basis of days to months, so that cut down on the logical columns needed from 365 per year to just 12. So now we can get the whole thing done, and um, I spread it over uh, 72 possible months for the forecast, and so we're looking at 72 columns instead of about a thousand columns before to handle what we were doing by day and all the logic it's completely um, useful to figure out how much inventory you're going to need to buy over time and what it's going to cost and when you got to pay for it based on dynamic payment terms lead times uh, minimum inventory levels and it's really, you know, I clean up a lot of edge cases with when, as far as like when your sales started uh, versus the lead time and the starting inventory balance. I've also implemented accounts payable. Uh, so let's look at a high level, um, high level uh, view of the whole template. So first control tab here, you're going to configure all the assumptions about each SKU. You know, we've got costs, price, sales growth. Um, how much how many months you're reordering for when you do reorder month sales start current inventory balance minimum inventory balance you can figure all that you go to historical sales count you can put your date here whatever it is it's going to go for 36 months starting with this month and this is just to get an average of your historical sales and get seasonality if you don't have historical sales then you can just put in your expected monthly uh starting sales right here in A and AY per SKU. And then if you're going to do that, you could just put in 0% for year one growth and that'll just be your year one sales. Uh, so it's very easy to play around with this depending on your situation. Uh, one thing to note on this is you wanna make sure if you're not going to count a column, you clear it out completely. If you put a zero in it, it will count it in the average, but if you clear it out, it will just not be counted. So you put in your historical sales. Um, based on that, you've got your seven year forecast based on the growth rates per year. This is the sales per month by SKU over the time. That's gonna deplete our inventory. We have payment terms. So this is gonna determine based on the order month, when do you pay for the inventory you're purchasing? And I've got th potentially three different um, payment events for each one. Here I've just put in the month you order, which would be month one you pay 50% of the inventory, and month two, you pay the other 50%. Now you could change this however you want and it will adjust on the cash requirement uh, logic and everything based on whatever you put in here. And these percentages should always equal 100. Okay, so you're there. We've got the monthly summary, which is gonna take all the logic we just put in and give you your units sold per month over time, your total sales, cost of goods sales, gross profit, uh, when units are arriving, the unit inventory units purchased, inventory purchases, inventory payments. This is your actual cash planning row right here. This is how much cash you need to be spending each month based on the inventory requirements. Here's your inventory balance. Here's your accounts payable balance. If you have payments that are happening after you order, here's your units balance. And then here's your trailing three month inventory average balance, which is a, a good thing to chart. Now I've also put on charts for all this. There's also an annual summary that shows the same data. Um, here's the visual. So you got total inventory balance, balance of units, actual inventory payments, inventory purchases, um, inventory units purchased. And here's that trailing 12 month or trailing three month uh, inventory balance average this is nice to see kind of what your inventory levels look like based on the seasonality the uh, expected sales and this is going up because we're growing at five percent per year 
So that's that's everything you'll basically be looking at here when you start to configure. I'm going to go over some use cases and different things, um, but once you configure that, all the actual logic is happening. You can see balance, arrivals, order month, and this is something new I did where I'm using a different tab for each matrix style, and the reason why is because if you want to extend this to more SKUs, this makes it very easy just to highlight the whole bottom row. You know, you just highlight the whole bottom row over for all seven years, get the little bottom right thing on the box, and just drag it down for as much as you want. And you can just do that for each tab. Nothing's getting in the way of that. I've got these summarized up to 10,000 rows, so it's going to pull all the data. And you can just do that for all the different tabs. Just drag the bottom row down. That's literally all you have to do to extend this to make it work. There's no other logic. There's no other requirements that you have to do to make it work correctly if you want to do more SKUs. Just simply drag the bottom row down and fill in data on the control tab, historical sales, um, payment terms you don't got to do anything with. This automatically updates, automatically updates, this automatically updates, and then again these ones you're just dragging down. So it's very easy to expand it for as many SKUs as you possibly need to forecast for. Um, so let's let's look at what's actually happening here. So in the current scenario, we're saying that sales start in January, and what that means is you're going to have to have enough on hand to cover your lead time. So if your lead time is one month, we're saying here we want to have roughly the first two months of expected sales covered. And so what I've did is a little helper here to enter, you know, you could enter your actual inventory balances if you have it, but if it's a startup and you're doing a forecast, you might want to say, well, this is what I expect to have to have in order to not have the inventory balance be less than what my demand is. So this calculation here will just take the first X months based on whatever your lead time is. Like if I made this two, you can see that number just went up to 404. If I put it back to 1, it's 270. And so if I copy those paste values here, it's now going to make sure my balance doesn't require reorder until the second month, which is enough for a, a one month lead time so the, the units can be ordered here and arrive here. And I have enough to get me through the first two months before I go below my safety stock. So that was um, an issue with the older templates is it didn't have nice logic for uh, to figure that out. Um, now, the other way you could do it, let's say you had like a five month lead time, you could still do this and it would work fine. You can see here you've got to now, uh, well, we'd have to copy it over. Copy, paste values. Now we go over to our balance and we have enough here um, to last us until we have a reorder event happening. And then based on the lead time, we'll have those inventory units coming in. You can see here the order month is automatically populating in January. Here's when they arrive. Here's when the units are ordered right here. Purchase amount. And also you can see on the monthly summary, we have a inventory balance starting. So this is the starting value based on this these numbers here against the average cost per unit. So that's a nice feature is you've got more accurate inventory balance tracking. You've got accounts payable tracking, um, which did not I did not have that in any of the previous template versions of this. Uh, so that's one way to do it. Now the other way is you can just say, well, I'm going to start the sales forecast maybe in the beginning of the next year and this is why I put in for max of six years so if you're doing a five-year forecast and you have lead times where you got to purchase in the previous year but you're not really selling till the next year you could have your sales forecast start in, in the following year you still have this inventory dynamically being purchased here because you know the lead time it takes time to get there to be ready to be sold so that still all counts the logic here and you've got proper balances going forward. And then you can see the balances tab here. We're actually getting these starting in January. But the order month 
you can see the order month is in August of 2024. So that's one way to get around the idea because I know a lot of people have problems where they would have lead times that are like, let's say, a couple months or, or greater than what the the forecast period had available because they wanted to start sales in January, but they had lead times of like five or six months and the model just couldn't account for where those are going to be purchased at, what's, what's the cost of that initial amount. Now you can do that either by going to the starting in the next year or with the first thing we said where you just make sure that your inventory balance matches enough so you have enough inventory to get you through your lead time from month one starting sales. So this just makes the model completely more usable. It's way, way more dynamic, less ways to break it's just better in a lot of ways and i've you know this is the most old template i've been through a lot of qa with customers and now i believe this is really we've got this thing to a point where it's it's really going to be useful for, for a lot of people um don't forget you can change the forecast year up here so right now i just have 2024 this will just drive uh when the monthly forecast actually starts the year it starts uh, and that can be changed to whatever um the only thing really tied to that Besides all the the summary data at the top is that your drop downs will be based on when this start year is, and then you could select here. Uh, what else do we want to talk about? Uh, so months to reorder for this three here is just saying that um, what we do to figure out if you look at the validation tab, we have the average sales per month in each year based on our growth rates. Now we know there's up and down seasonality, but we're as far as how to figure out how much we want to order, we just take the average sales per month for each year by SKU, and then multiply it by whatever we put into here. And now that'll give us a rough, rough, um, but, but good reference based reorder amount. So these are the reorder amounts whenever a reorder triggers. Now the reorder trigger happens dynamically based on if a given month goes below the inventory uh, minimum inventory level. So for example, if I'm on the balance tab here, I, I'm selling units. I've, I bought units and sold units in January, so it's going down a little bit, going down, 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 down. And then here you can see at 135 ending balance May, well in June we have more sales than that so we would have to have inventory arriving in june because 135 minus our june 2024 expected sales for that SKU is 135 and we have a balance of 135. So it's going to go to zero at the end of June, and that's below our safety stock of 25. So that triggers in the logic, okay, we need to have units arriving here. We we look at the lead time and figure out, okay, well, based on that, we got to order the units in April. So you can see here, this 477 is being ordered in April, arriving in June, because we have a two-month lead time. So all that works dynamically. Um, that's a, a, a just a good example of what is happening here with this. Uh, yeah, I mean, so that that's pretty much everything I can I can say about it. Again, this was the most sold template I've had in the past six years, so I I thought you know it's time to get this thing improved based on all the customer feedback I've had and just new modeling skills and and t uh, strategies I've I've come up with to make this more usable. Um, so, and again, now before there was like four different versions, there was a startup version, an ongoing operations version, and then like a 19 SKU version and a 500 SKU version. Now this single version here works for all of that, whether you're a startup, ongoing operations, and you can easily just drag the rows, bottom rows down if you have more than 19 SKUs and everything will auto update. It's also, again, on a monthly basis instead of daily, so the file is a lot lighter and just more efficient. All right, well, that's all I got. If you're forecasting inventory, this tool is essential. Any organization that needs to forecast inventory, 
figure out what their inventory um, cash payments are going to be over the next, you know, three years, five years, uh, by month, um, the average inventory balance, the resulting unit balance, payables, all that stuff. We've got it all in here. Alrighty, guys, check out the template. You can get it at smarthelping.com. Let me show you right here. It'll be under, if we go to home, it'll be under the inventory tab, and it will be the first one here. So this is what it currently is. This update video is going to go right here, and I'll update the screenshots and obviously the file. So now when you pay for this, you're going to get this template that I just built. and It'll be right here. Um, in the inventory bundle. Um, you can also get it in the accounting templates bundle. There's a lot of other stuff in here for accountants that are, is really useful, but you can see this one here is what we just updated today. Alrighty, take it easy. Oh, before I forget, if you do want to buy all the templates on the site, you can go to the financial models tab at the top, go to learn more here, and for $9.99, I've got over 150 templates across the site, and I've got a lot of stuff for um, all kinds of startup businesses. We've got stuff in the SaaS space, real estate modeling, cash flow waterfalls, um, a whole bunch of stuff. Here you can see all the models individually, industry specific, um, kind of templates, HR management, Google Sheets, database trackers, sales pipeline, all sorts of stuff business valuation, and more. Um, what I will be doing in the future as well is adding smaller bundles. Like you can see here, I've done the automotive industrial manufacturing bundles. Those are new. I'm trying to take more niche templates that fit together and put them in affordable bundles. Uh, so look for more of that. I've got, um, I want to do it for all these first. So we did these top three. I want to do a hospitality bundle. Um, We've got a services one, retail trade, that's going to be a new bundle, financial services, uh, recreational activities, food. So look for that as well. Um, all right, guys, take it easy, and I'll see you on the next one.